Amity, in Maine, has for years been a relatively peaceful little town. It is a Canadian border town with a kinda small population of people, Amity consists of a tightly knit community of closely connected people. Given the tightly knit nature of the community, people in Amity basically had little fear of crime and lived peacefully. It was a town where people still slept with their doors unlocked, like simple times from the past. But on June 22, 2010, Everything changed when an outsider took the lives of three innocent people, a father, Jeff Ryan, his best friend, Jason Dehan, and his 10-year-old son, Jesse Ryan. Their lives were taken by a young man, with a knife, at Jeff's mobile home, with seemingly no motive at all. It was a shocking moment for the people of Amity, as three innocent people's lives were taken in cold blood. The murders took place in Jeff Ryan's mobile home and are considered by most as the worst murder case in the history of the state of Maine. The bodies of the victims were found inside their mobile home on Route 1. It was a terrifying sight for the residents of Amity, who had never questioned the kind of dangers that may have been lurking around them. The police initially struggled with the investigation, and asked the public for help in uncovering the details of the crime. A truck was missing from Jeff Ryan's home, and the police felt that the truck could have played a major role in the murders. The truck was a 1989 Ford F-150, blue and silver pickup, that was stolen from the scene of the crime. One individual, that lived near the Ryan's home, was in disbelief about the horrifying murders, and said that they would never have thought that something like this could happen in Amity. A neighbor, that lived close to the mobile home of the victims, said that they never heard any noise on the day of the murders, and that something like this happening in their community, was almost unheard of. Jeff Ryan's ex-wife, and Jesse Ryan's mother, Jamie Merrill, were told about the horrible murder of their loved ones, by a Maine state police. Jesse had been living in his mother's home since March and was extremely loved. In the wake of her child's death, Merrill could only plead with the authorities to find her child's murderer and bring him to justice. Maine state police provided almost no details, to the grieving mother, who had to investigate the details herself using the information found online. It was then revealed to the distraught mother, that her child had been viciously stabbed to death. Merrill, then six months pregnant, was rushed to the hospital, as she struggled to cope with the trauma of this incident. The search for the killer brings police to 20-year-old Thane Ormsby, a smooth-talking drifter who'd only been in town for three weeks. Why would somebody murder three people like that? And what kind of person could be so cruel? as to take the life of an innocent child. Thane's charm and chameleon-like personality may have been enough to get him through to this point, in his still young life, but it's not enough for him to slip by detectives, and they hunt him down in New Hampshire to find out exactly what happened that night. Around the time that the murders were committed, Ormsby was living with the elderly Robert Strout and his wife, Joy Strout, in Orient. In addition to this, the police also searched the house of Robert Strout in Orient. Authorities believe that Robert Strout may have helped Ormsby and therefore the police were in search of any information that would connect Strout to the crime. Strout was the father of Ryan's ex-girlfriend, Tamara Strout. On the same day as Ormsby's arrest, the police were able to find a knife in the muddy waters of a bog in Orient. The police suspected that this knife was connected to the crimes and was the knife used in the stabbings. As the search for the knife was happening, Ormsby even admitted that Strout had driven him to the box so that they could dispose of that crucial piece of evidence. Detective Dale Keegan knew he was looking into the eyes of a killer, but he didn't want to believe it. This scrawny, shaggy-haired kid sitting in front of him. How could such a seemingly normal-looking young man be capable of such a violent and heinous crime? But his gut told him he was hiding something. The question was, how to get it out of him. His confidence was laced with the superficial charm of somebody twice his age. But his blind spot was that because of this, he didn't seem to think the detectives were onto him. What type of person you think would do this? Keegan asked Thane. I haven't given it much thought, but, I mean, cold. Greedy. Heartless. 
Somebody with no love for life. With no love for things that grow. He responded. Keegan knew thing would slip up. And they would be ready for it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Anna, let's see for a second. Can you bring me a coffee? When he gets back in here, I'll go get you one, all right? Do you want? Do you actually want coffee, though? Yes. Sir. Okay, I'll get you one in a minute. I'll get you one when he gets back in here. I'm going to cry. Yeah. I know. It's a lot to absorb, buddy. It's a lot to process. I'm going to go get him his coffee. Okay. Yeah. Since you're going okay, uh, you decide to answer questions now with or without a lawyer present, you have the right to stop answering at any time. Stop answering at any time until you can talk to a lawyer. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. You do. Now, having all these rights I've explained to you in mind, do you wish to answer questions at this time? Yes, sir. You do. Where do you want to start? Where would you like to start? When did you go up there that night? Tuesday night. Tuesday night? What Before time was it? Before dark. Six, seven. Jason was there at this point? Jason was there. Was that the first time you met him? No, it wasn't. Okay. What happened? You're on your pedal bike. I'm on my pedal bike. Okay. okay. What happened? I mean, how detailed do you want to be? As much as you can. So what would you spot from your memory? Yeah. And what do you want Walk me through it. Yeah. I'm already guilty, I might as well. Right. Okay, so we're, I'll start from the beginning. I show up, and my idea is to kill Jeff Ryan, take his truck, and kill Alvin Silsby, because I... They were bad people, and they hurt people. Mm -hmm. And I did. And I thought... It was some means of justification. I thought something could, could grow from taking away that. Mm -hmm. So you went. So like I said, everything was going fine. and We were talking about, I've been talking about spending the winter in the forest. Just camping out. In the forest? Um, yeah. Okay. Building a hut. Sure. And he said, oh, I got nails. So I took me to the shed. To show me nails, and I stabbed him in the back. He said, "What the fuck? Stop it!" Okay. Yeah. You don't say anything. Else. Okay. He's down, and, and, and you I leave go him back there. in. I leave him there, and I go back in. I stab Jason, and Jesse ran into the back room. So I chase Jesse, and he was the quickest. He just said he was scared. What's going through your head right now? I'd rather die. Honestly, to spend an entire life in prison. As a slave, when everything I've studied and everything I've believed and everything has led me to believe that freedom is the most important thing there is. What would you like to have happen? The best possible outcome from this? Mm -hmm. Realistically. Realistically? Of course. Well, I mean, obviously, the families need to know what happened. Mm -hmm. They deserve an apology. It won't mean much. Yeah, I was going to say, what should we tell the family? What do you want us to tell the family? What do you want us to tell the little boy's mother? That it wasn't personal. That it wasn't... to hurt her, that I'm sorry. What can you tell her, honestly? I don't know. I can't bring you back from the dead. You can't send me to Hades. No. 
that you put in there, you killed the son. What do you want us to say to the mother? Or what do you want us to say to uh, Jason's wife and three little kids? He has three kids, what, one, two, and ten or something. Anything you want us to tell those kids? Other than the fact you're just trying to see if you're proficient or not? Anything else you want to say as we wrap up our interview? I know, sorry, it's not good. No, I know, I know. But you can throw it out there. Hmm. I'm more curious about anything than that. Don't mean I'm just more curious. What would happen if you get away with this? We didn't catch you. Would you have continued? You think you no. would have done this again? No. Would you have gone and found that other guy that you had on your list? Yeah. Not any time this decade. No. I was completely ready to settle for a normal life. Ultimately, that's a normal life. Ultimately, that's what you're looking for. All right, let me go check with my people. Okay, I'm going to take that with you. Yep. Is that your pen, Dan? Yeah. Sam, take care of him. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just made you to sign it. You signed it. I dated it. You dated it. Okay. I forgot to sign it. That's fine. possible outcome. Okay. Honestly. Yep. That good things could grow where evil was destroyed. You might not see it like that, but it's quite possible that these families will now become closer stronger where they were. Mm -hmm. That maybe those children might be better growing up without their father. Mm -hmm. As for the boy, he was so young. Too young. But, from what I understand, he too was well on his way to Thompson. Yeah, here I am ready to go to prison, but as for me, <clears throat> I have a feeling what's going to happen is, is I'm either going to die in prison or to the lawyer, representing the state, illustrated for the jury that the confession presented by Ormsby and the details of the case, as presented through various pieces of evidence in the trial, were a near perfect match. The sharp consistency between the evidence presented by the state, and the details of Ormsby's confession meant that it was fairly clear that Ormsby had committed the murders. Ormsby, however, had not been the only one guilty of these sickening murders. Robert Strout, then 65, also soon pleaded guilty to hindering apprehension and arson in the Ormsby case. Strout came clean and told the authorities that he had aided Ormsby in setting fire to the pickup truck stolen from the crime scene, and that he had been complicit in hiding all the leftover evidence. Additionally, Strout provided a safe place to Ormsby, he took him to New Hampshire to stay with his son while hiding. The murder trial ended up with a killer, Thane Ormsby in jail with three life sentences. Surprisingly, Robert Strout was not charged in the murder case. However, he did not manage to completely evade prison. While the charges in the murder case were completely dropped, 
Strout did serve time in prison for selling opiates to his grandson, in a case unrelated to the Amity Triple murders. Some years later, Ormsby had attempted to overturn his conviction, with a petition to the United States District Court. The basis for this petition was that Ormsby had been interviewed by detectives, involved in the investigation, even after he had asked for legal counsel. However, the convictions were upheld by the court, and the arguments presented by Ormsby were considered baseless. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos, drop a like in there too. Thanks for watching, and if you would like to see a certain video on something, leave it in a comment below. Until next time, stay safe.